Um, first off, let's be clear, zone two, that's we term it endurance. So we're talking right around 60, maybe uh, not even as high as 70. We typically land at 65% FTP. Mm -hmm. Seems like a good point, whether or not you want to pad it by 5% or trim it by 5%, it's still going to carry about the same stress benefits, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and zone two in a seven zone model, not the three zone model. We're not talking about threshold work here. We're talking about easy endurance work. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think, and uh, shame on us for doing this, I think we termed <laughs> these TSS fillers a while back, and that has... On the podcast, uh, yeah. Yeah, wrong mm -hmm. connotation, because we're not looking to fill TSS, we're just talking about more stress, and really an easy form of stress, an easily digestible, easy one to tolerate, easy one to adapt to, and an easy one to you know decide, this is, this is a little too easy for me today, I'm going to up the effort a little bit, it's a little too difficult today, I'm going to make this a recovery ride, or maybe I'm just going to skip the workout. Mm -hmm. So it's not to imply that it's not an important workout, it's just one of those workouts that if you're going to trim your training load, this is probably where you start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on the opposite, you can't, you can only do so much intensity. Our five Getting watt per that. kilo rider. Oh, yeah. well, okay. Our five <laughs> watt per kilo rider here, yeah. he even does dance a 30 minute. Yep. I'm air, using air quotes, TSS recovery cover, ride. aerobic right. ride right. in the morning. That's uh, a legit recovery ride. Oh, is it? What That's percentage 50%. is that? 50. Okay. 50%. Yeah. Yeah. But the same kind of thing though, just a little bit more time on the bike, a little yes. more, uh, yes. a little more stress, and maybe not as much comes a lot of benefits. And then he's doing a harder workout that same day. So mm -hmm. your point is yeah, fast so riders do two a day. Yeah. Fast riders do this too. Well, you got to do more volume. There's only one way to get more volume. Mm -hmm. You can't do all intervals forever. Right. I feel like you're reading ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you're, you're poaching my answer. Okay. Um, okay. So erase so, that. We never heard it. So just like Nate said, I mean, we're looking for greater training load and this is one of the ways to acquire that. It is that mm -hmm. simple. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the week, if you're doing more training stress than you did the prior week and you're handling it, it means your body's adapting to a higher load, mm -hmm. greater work capacity, more workload, adaptation, greater work capacity. It is that simple. Um, and then interval workouts can only get so big and so demanding. I mean, we can't just take a, a, a VO2 max workout and tack on three or four more intervals because you want <laughs> you want this much more TSS. Or yeah. it, it gets a little dangerous when we're working with high-intensity stuff. It has right. to be modulated. It has to be governed more tightly. Um, so, so these are low-stress or some call them low-strain rides but with that comes endurance conditioning there there is a benefit to this it's 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 a different type of fatigue but because it's a different type type of fatigue it allows us to kind of layer the different forms of stress on our body without overdoing it so mm -hmm. we can do some vo2 max work we can do some muscle endurance work and then when our bodies really can't take much more we can layer on some aerobic work and it doesn't have to be two three five hour rides in order for that endurance work to carry endurance benefit that's the big question yes. people have, right? Yes. Totally. Yeah. They think that unless you have a ton of volume, there's absolutely And no rightly point. so, because if this is all you did, if all you did was get on the bike every day and rode at 65% for one hour and that was your training, that's yeah. that constituted your training, you're not going to get faster. Right. You're going to hover right there. You know, you might, you'll incur some of the benefits that come along with this type of training, but you're never going to be a faster rider. But this is not what we're talking about. These are supplemental or complementary, really. Mm -hmm. These are layered on top of the other forms of stress we're incurring mm. during the other days of the week. So um, there are basically two ways to stimulate aerobic adaptation, two different signaling pathways. One of them is based on calcium, one of them is based on how fast we deplete energy and, and, and AMP. So ATP gets degraded to, or gets broken down to ADP, gets broken down to ATP, that a, or, sorry, AMP. That presence turns on particular signaling. Same with if you, and this comes with high intensity training. With longer endurance, lower lower intensity training, you get what's called calcium signaling. So just constant calcium uh, activity at the muscle level. That turns on the same type of signaling. So you got high intensity short term and long inten or uh, low intensity long term riding. Both have the same downstream um, uh, transcriptional effect. Got it. So so you can get ad adaptation through two different mechanisms. But again, you can only do so much high intensity work. So why not attack it from the other side of things and do it with the low intensity stuff that the body tolerates isn't such a disruption to your autonomic system, your sympathetic um, uh, activities or response. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as research on this sort of thing, there's really no shortage of it. And I just called a couple. There's a, a 2015 review and reviews look at many studies. Mm -hmm. So in particular, these guys uh, sussed out, it was Milanovic, Sporus, and Weston. They, they sussed out 28 different studies that fulfilled a particular criteria and they either looked at high intensity interval training or continuous endurance training and, and recognize that the benefits are similar with both. Mm -hmm. they, they both achieve the same end game. So 
And, and, and you know, of course, you're thinking, okay, so yeah, right. They, they had people doing high intensity interval training, and they had people doing long endurance rides. Mm -hmm. A lot of these were a lot of these consisted of 20 minute, 30 minute, and 60 minute endurance rides. Mm -hmm. They just did them with a high level of consistency, and these were probably athletes who weren't exceptionally well conditioned. But the fact is, they found the right stimulus to achieve adaptation, and they did it with low intensity work. Yeah. For most people listening to this podcast, they're probably an athlete that's that's higher than just like the base level. Right. Sure. And that's that's and chances but are it's still it's still I mean, we just have to outpace what your body's currently used to. Right. So I, I, what I'm getting at here is that um, chances are you're doing some sort of intense work and chances are you're preparing for an intense event, whatever that is, or intense yep. day, something like that. So that's why you're doing the more intense work. That's why you're doing that sort of thing, you know, specificity toward your race. But that doesn't mean that these sort of things, these sort of shorter workouts that are lower in intensity mm -hmm. are not helpful. Yes. And it's just because it's low level stress doesn't mean it's not stress. It's still muscle stress. And with that following proper recovery, there's still adaptation. Mm -hmm. So low level stress is stress, not riding at all. Choosing to bypass this workout is no stress. There's not, there's nothing to be gained there. You might recover, but you know, there, there are probably better ways to spend your time than doing nothing. Fact, right. Well, it depends. Almost, almost. Yeah. It depends on what level yeah. of fatigue you're experiencing exactly. at the moment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What about, I see people, so we have a, uh, do this. We have a, a feature now where you can extend the cooldown. Mm -hmm. So let's say you do an interval set and then maybe, maybe even tomorrow you have a 30 minute, uh, aerobic ride like this uh -huh. or a 60 minute. What if you, Use a, the the cool down feature. You extend it 30 or 60 minutes, and you Absolutely. raise it up to 60, 65 percent. Can you get benefits there? Totally viable option, and you get a lot of the same benefits plus some. Because if if you nourish properly over the higher intensity portion of the workout, and then you head into this lower intensity portion of it, and you stop your nourishment, you're effectively doing a fasted ride and getting some of the benefits that come with fasted riding. Hmm. And even if you're not, you're you're taking fatigue and extending it to to the fibers that probably didn't get cooked. So if you did yeah. a high intensity workout, maybe your slow twitch fibers are still firing on all all cylinders. So you use this extra 30 or 40 minutes tacked on to the end of the workout to run those fibers down problem is not a lot of athletes have more than an hour yeah. hour and a half to train so it's hard to tack on another hour of low intensity work so we do it on a different day but there are other reasons for doing it on a different day that i'll get to in a minute so that's a great that's a great thing that so we have it in the higher volume plans you'll see it where you'll do intervals and then like in that plan it'll be extra after that mm -hmm. but i like the idea of too it's like all of one type of, of, of muscle fiber is cooked mm -hmm. and now you get the other one. Mm -hmm. So that, that, like your anaerobics already cooked and it's not like contributing at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then for some people, they can never do a Wednesday workout, right? Like Wednesday is sure. not. So if you can't do it Wednesday at all, you could do it you on that tack day. It onto this. Yeah. Please do. Yep. I mean, there, there are a lot of benefits to go with it, a lot of advantages to doing that. Cool. Um, so let's get to what the intended goals are, why I have these workouts on Wednesday, these hour long 65% workouts. And then in the high volume plans, I have them on Friday too. Sometimes they're shorter. Sometimes they're, they're this very thing, hour of 60 ish percent mm -hmm. consistency above all else. Consistency. We've talked many times about how, how the most important aspect of training is consistency. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just, that's, that's the way it is. So mm -hmm. if we can get riders on the bike more days per week, they're probably going to see improvement, assuming they're not running themselves into the ground. A common question I get like personally is people will reach out to me and say like, hey, Jonathan, which training plan is best for X, Y, and Z? And my basic answer before I answer any of that is the one that you can follow with <coughs> consistency. Because uh, whenever we look at athletes that are consistent, they may be doing a low volume plan while somebody may be trying to ha follow a high volume plan, but with very bad consistency. Sure. If you can follow that low volume with consistency. That's actually a point I touch on coming up too. Uh, I definitely want to talk ahead. about that. No, you no, need to read fine. ahead. That's fine. <laughs> You're just kind of teasing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and, and when you do these rides on Wednesday, or especially if you do them at the end of a longer or a different uh, form of work, a high intensity uh, workout, you get certain benefits. One of them being now you're operating in some level of glycogen depletion. Mm. And you're also, which, which of course, you know, is akin to the fasted riding where you get the certain mitochondrial bump and, and uh, aerobic adaptations that take place because you're low on, on glycogen. Your body has to use fat, has to get good at using fat. Um, but there's also, uh, it might be a level of muscle damage. So, so your, your, your fatigued fibers aren't going to get recruited during this low intensity ride, which means your body's going to start to recruit fresher fibers, which means more Mm -hmm. recruitment better recruitment patterns so now you have more active fiber available for for other training and racing and that is the the one benefit that's hard to get but those times we get a different way that you get from like the five hour ride right is to really fatigue those muscles that take a long time to fatigue yeah so this is kind of a pre-exhaustion sort of method you, yeah. you've already you've already tired them or fatigued them so that it's easier to get at these fresher fibers yeah do yeah. a sweet spot like right peak where it's three by 30 at sweet spot mm -hmm. and then do some aerobic rides, <laughs> you will be fatigued. Yes. Like, but mm -hmm. also it, 
with all of this stuff, we're talking about more volume. It's so easy to overdo it. Oh, yeah. Like right yeah. peak, yeah. I am cooked it's, the next day. I don't want to do anything afterwards. My legs are all the all the fibers are cooked. Like <laughs> yep. they're all well done. <laughs> yep. yep. So, and when we look at this from the perspective of time constrained riders, especially, there's there's really only way one way, one way to supplement because you can't add more high intensity work. I mean, if you're already doing two, maybe three days of high intensity, adding a fourth day, I promise you, is is, is going to work for very few riders, if any. Yeah. Um, you can do recovery in place of these if that's what's necessary. If you recognize getting on the bike that 65% is hard today, my body is very tired, even 65% isn't going to allow me to recover effectively and I'm going to have a bad Thursday or, or weekend set of workouts as a consequence. So dial it down, do a different workout, skip the workout altogether. Um, and it, so, so it makes it kind of one of the only options for increasing ride frequency. The only way we're going to get riders on the bike more frequently and that consistency is hugely important is to do it in, in a lower intensity manner. Mm -hmm. So by skipping these, you're basically sabotaging your consistency. Yeah, that's a great point. And then a, a super crucial point is that uh, fitness is never stagnant. It's just not. It never hovers. You don't, you don't push yourself to a certain level of fitness and then it just stays there indefinitely. You have to maintain it. So it's either, Only. It's either on the ascent <laughs> or it's on the descent. That's it. it. It never stays in one place. And Ed Coyle, I think it was 2000, I don't even remember when, a few years back, had a study that, that uh, he's a PhD, by the way, from the University of Texas at Austin, one of the preeminent researchers in endurance uh, sports science, um, suggest that runners begin to detrain or lose their fitness after 48 to 72 hours. Yeah. So it doesn't take long, but we're not talking big decrements <laughs> in fitness. So, so nobody panic. It's not like six weeks of training is suddenly going to go out the window, but you get a slight <laughs> downtick. It starts to, it starts to trend downward. And every day that you don't do it, it continues to trend downward. I, so if we can get you on the bike to stave <laughs> that decline off again and again and again, and we can do it in a low impact or a low intensity, low strain manner, why the heck not? It's almost like if this was happening, if this conversation was happening before the time trial challenge, like if we had a time <laughs> trial challenge coming up because we're prepping for 24 hours in the old Pueblo and Nate had every intention of training consistently throughout this week, but he was at a conference where he wasn't able to train. And when he read 48 to 72 hours, he was totally thinking of this week. <laughs> were you not? Yes. <laughs> we tried to so bring- So in other words, you're getting in his head, Chad. This is good. <laughs> we were cycling in the San Jose area and we, we like bought Airbnb that's right next to these great mountains. And Pete and Brandon were with me. We're gonna mm -hmm. have Team Cliff Bar people were gonna come with us. Jeff from NorCal Cycling was gonna come with us. Yeah but there's too much snow over the past, so we could not get bikes over there. And we were just so bummed that we couldn't do that. Cause you just look around those beautiful mountains yeah. and it was, I really haven't cycled all week and then traveling is tough and I'm super tired today, Yeah. yeah. but I'm, this is this, so here, Chad, I'm super tired from a conference, but I really want to train today. Yeah. we actually, we have another question that's going to address that later on. Okay. So this so basically Nate's late to the party. So yeah. he's trying, he's playing catch. Yeah, I just he literally got, just got, got here. here yeah. <clears throat> Chad and I kind of prepared this episode for you. Okay. Well, yeah, so it'll be see. good. Thanks Some guys. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, and then it's going to answer you, but you're screwed. <laughs> one other study. So one other tidbit of research. And again, I didn't have to look long and hard to find this stuff. So I, I assure you there's more out there. I'm going to, I'm just going to read this. Just quote it. The evidence suggests that capillaries and aerobic enzymes can be developed effectively by multiple relatively short sessions and that appreciable improvements in fat metabolism can be achieved with sessions of 45 minutes duration. Just 45 minutes. Yeah. So 60 minutes, I mean, we're, we're definitely covering that base. Yeah, so it doesn't take a ton, in other words. Well, up no. to an extent. Right. Yeah, you can improve with short, but then once you start to stagnate, <laughs> exactly. volume you or gotta intensity. Find a new, new or stimulus. Both. Yep. Yeah, got to increase something, got to change something. Yeah. Um, so the specific adaptations that come with a solid 60 minutes of riding at 65%, and that's something that can't be underplayed too. We're not talking about going out on a nice spring day and noodling along for the better part of an hour at an intensity that's barely making you breathe through your mouth. This, it, these, this constitutes a sufficient workload for most people. 65 minutes of steady totally. effort for an entire hour is a reasonably tall order for most riders, especially if you're carrying any fatigue into it. Especially if you're new to indoor training. Yes, because, yes, that too. And this is huge for, I think all cyclists, uh, it's you come inside and there's such a big bang for your buck for not stop pedaling the whole time. Yes. The, the, the amount of fatigue that your muscle fibers get is so much more than that same time outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'd have to do probably I, the rule of thumb is like 50% It's more. incomparable. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's a pretty pretty different margin. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's a couple things that you get if you get on the bike that you don't get if you decide to skip pet it, for example. Mm -hmm. Lymph removal. So so the, the waste products, the stuff that is uh, a product of the repair and, and nutrient, well, nutrient delivery in addition. These are things that, I mean, that, that lymph removal doesn't take place unless the muscles are actually 
pumping, right? Contracting and, and relaxing. And then the nutrient delivery, the, the, the circulation via the bloodstream is enhanced when you get on the bike and actually do a little bit of work. Hmm. So the restoration is actually a big concern, but that is fatigue dependent. So if you recognize that Pettit leaves mm -hmm. you flat and you're doing it just because it's on your training plan, you have to, you have to s stop doing that. You have to recognize that I'm tired from yesterday's workout, Tuesday workout, and I have a hard workout on Thursday. So if I'm on the bike and I'm already dragging, this is probably not the right call. Yeah. So do recognize that, that this is low intensity work, but it might not be low enough to constitute restoration if you're really tired. If there's one thing that you'll learn as a cyclist, amongst all the other things that you have a chance to learn, there's one thing that you probably will learn if you're training and going through this process is how to listen and understand. Listen to your body and understand it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always hard. It's hard. Because it's it's like uh, sometimes you push through it and you get like a whole new level of fitness. You thought like you just weren't HTFUing yes, enough. Yeah. Uh, and then sometimes so you push it. through it and you get sick and it's very... It's very, yeah. that's, that's the, that's the ever, if anyone knew how to do that exactly right, they sure. would be super fit. That's sure. the, it's that's a, the balance. It's a constant learning process and, yep. and there's always amount, a certain amount of guesswork going yeah. on. Totally. It's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. Um, and then not to just drag this out and out and out, but there was a lot of discussion on the forum and um, there's a lot of little subtopics I want to address within this overarching theme. Um, this is an opportunity to do early morning endurance work too, to actually do some fasted rides of which there are legitimate endurance benefits and low cost too. I mean, this is easy work, so why not do it in a fasted state and garner a little extra benefit? These are great rides for doing that. 60, 65% mm -hmm. is, a, is a, an ideal place to work. And they don't take the amount of mental energy that other rides nope. take. So uh, in the morning, I find those rides take more mental energy, especially if I haven't eaten, but totally. it's doable if it's a 60 minute and then and you yeah. eat right after so it's, you're yeah. just postponing your meal slightly it's yeah. not a big deal and the benefits of a fasted ride are not just fat loss people assume that's just the case no right? no it's there, just that, there's but. a number of them i mean so so not only are you burning fat while you're doing it but you're also teaching your body how to metabolize fat and anything as we've seen or we know over about 75 seconds of effort becomes predominantly aerobic in nature so our aerobic engines are quite important um, carbohydrate sparing. So when you actually need the carbohydrate, you're not using it on these lower intensity affairs or efforts. Mm -hmm. And then endothelial function, you know, the inside of your blood vessels, just how, I mean, th th there are all sorts of effects from fasted riding that also go with endurance training in general. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, bike fit opportunities. If there's one time where I notice just how poorly positioned I am on my bike, it's when there's low tension on my legs, when I'm actually carrying a lot uh, more of my weight, yep. relatively more of my weight on my undercarriage and my elbows or hands, mm -hmm. depending on what type of bike I'm riding. Yep. These low intensity rides, low pressure on the muscles are a great time to suss out <laughs> fit issues. They're also a great time to work on your time trial position, for instance. I was going to say it's almost impossible to ride a TT bike for the really light <sighs> stuff because you're not pushing yourself up as much and everything gets heavier. It it's depends, hard. right? I mean, if you have a really aggressive 40K position, yeah. yeah I mean, if, I mean, you if you're like an Ironman triathlete, matter you should be on that bike for right. four, five, six hours. You should probably know what it feels like to ride at yeah. low a intensity. lower intensity for yeah. that long. Yeah. Yep, great. Um, and then connective tissue integrity. This is a great way to strengthen connective tissue, which doesn't respond the same way muscle tissue does. It takes much longer. It just doesn't get the amount of blood flow, so it takes a little more uh, delicate uh, work. And then uh, muscle priming. So this, this kind of goes hand in hand with the topic we're going to talk about in a minute, but a day off the bike leaves so many people sluggish and lethargic for their next workout. Not to mention there's a decline in, a potential decline in endorphins, or natural painkillers that we'll, we'll touch on in a little while. So yet another reason. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that about covers it. Probably pretty sufficient. Is that it? If that's not enough reason to get you on the bike for a one hour pedit ride in between your other high intensity rides, I don't know what will be. Or 90 minute Baxter. Yeah, there we are. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. so if yeah. pedit's not sufficient enough strain or stress, that's what you we, see. We have alternatives. If you follow me on Strava, Nate Pearson, it's like that's what you see me do a lot because yeah. I can only do so much intensity. I do Coliseum just because I don't want to do. Just because I don't want to do Baxter. It's <laughs> only mildly Coliseum. harder. I feel like you own that workout. It's Coliseum <laughs> is harder than Baxter by a lot. No, but not by a lot. I mean, it's slightly. just yeah. You, it's the same exact workout, but some of the lows are just not as low. It's maybe harder for you, but clearly not for Coach Chad over here. It's, for good it's plenty hard for Coach Chad. <laughs> Everything's hard for me right now. Can I clarify one thing? Uh, it's not a recovery workout. Yeah, so and I so, feel like a lot of people view it yeah, definitely because not it's workout. lower and it's simpler. They view it as a recovery. Can't workout. drive that home enough. This is not intended for recovery. If you need recovery, this is not the workout you select. So yeah. recess, dance, Taku, Taku minus, minus one. one. 
those are like good ones that I see people usually do for recovery. Yeah, and the recess workouts, workouts, it's a 60 minute workout, but there's the, the workout instructions within that workout say, if you're tired now, cut it off. I mean, it, you can make that a 20 minute workout and I actually encourage you within that instructional text to do exactly that. Recognize when this recovery ride is not feeling like recovery anymore and get off the bike. The one thing I want to say too about fasted rides are, I, I've done them before, but personally I find the next day require more recovery. Mm -hmm. It's added stimulus. So um, we're gonna talk about that too. Not in this question, it's another question. <laughs> but so personally, yeah. I don't do it because I don't want it to, the benefits of doing that, I'd rather have the next day kill my, my interval workout. Agreed. Yep, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a strong case for not doing passive rides.